Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. I'm Lori, and today I'm here to talk to you about Pelotonia, uh, the bike ride that I do every year to raise money for cancer research. Here's Wellington. Um, a brief overview. Uh, Pelotonia is a local fundraiser to me here in Columbus, Ohio. They raise money for cancer research through the James at the Ohio State University. And the biggest thing for me is 100% of the money I raise goes directly to cancer research. No money that I raise or if you can donate will go towards the foundation of Pelotonia. It all goes to the James. Um, that money is used for research. It's used to pay for fellowships, for up and coming doctors in research. I mean, it's endless. Um, I will tell you briefly that I did lose both my parents to cancer, um, my dad in 2011 and my mom in 2017. They were both treated at the James, so it is near and dear to my heart. Um, I would ask if you could help in any way to click the link below, or I will put across the screen the website to my ride. If you can't, I totally understand. Please do not feel obligated. Um, but if you could like, subscribe, comment, share, get some traction on these videos, that would be the biggest help too. Um, so I could get some more views and hopefully raise some money on these videos to donate to my cause. So even if like you can't donate money, maybe just watch the commercials. That would be fantastic um, because of the money that I, that I earn on these videos go to my ride. I do have to raise $1,550 minimum in order to ride. I'm shooting for 5,000, but we'll see what happens. Wellington would like to say hello. Hi buddy. Say hi. Hey. Hi. Okay, in this video, I'm going to take you on a tour of my bike. Just a brief little overview of Speedy. Um, I've had Speedy for 10 years now, and this is my 11th year riding in Pelotonia. I did want to, let me scooch back, because I want to show you what gear is involved. So the things that I need in order to ride efficiently and safely. The first being a road bike. You don't have to have a road bike to ride in Pelotonia, but if you want to ride 50 miles like I do, a road bike is where it's at because they're super light. I can lift it with two fingers. Just saying. Next piece of gear is a must. You have to have a helmet. So in order to go out and safely ride a bike, you got to wear a helmet, guys. I know. They're not attractive. But it's a must. A must. Got to protect your noggin. So we all do it. And we love it. And that's pretty much the extent of what you have to have. A bike and a helmet. Now, the other things that I have are accessories there. They go along with it. And again, they make me more comfortable. They make my ride more comfortable. Um, safety wise, on the back of my bike, there is a bag that holds a flat tire kit. It holds my little tool for my bike and it holds patches for my tires. And also little um, air canisters that will inflate my tires enough to get me home. These tires hold 100 to 110 pounds of pressure. They're very, very, very tight. They're hard. You fill them with a lot of air and they're slicks. So you'll see when I do a close up, there's no, there's no, hi, there's no traction on these wheels. Anything, the wider the wheel, the more bumpy they are, the more you're working. And this is all about Streamline. And on the front of Streamline, you have, <laughs> what I affectionately, affectionately like to call my sausage casing. This is a jersey that we wear for ride day specifically, but I do wear these for training rides. They are aerodynamic. Um, the ones that we get from my company, this is my company sponsored one, has a zip down the front. They are longer in the back, so when you're leaned over, your tushy's covered and they have little pockets that you can put snacks in gotta have your snacks or like sometimes I stick my phone back here I will have tissues because my nose runs so we wear a jersey makes you more aerodynamic but this is also made with like sweat wicking fabric which is important so when you're riding a bicycle long distance and I'm talking like an hour or more which is what I typically go out and ride so my average weekend ride would be 20 to 25 miles the theory is if you can comfortably ride 25 miles you can ride 50 that's what I shoot for. Um, also hill training, lots of hill training. 
but you gotta do it. So the, so when you're riding your bike, you're kind of making your own wind. And when you're sweating, you don't realize how much you're sweating. This fabric is designed to wick it away from your body and it evaporates off your skin. So you gotta stay hydrated. So I have two water holders on my bike. I carry electrolytes in one and plain water in the other. And if I'm gonna be riding for more than an hour and a half, I drink straight electrolytes. Part of my ketogenic diet also, I lose minerals a little faster. So those are things that I really need to keep up with or I will end up getting dehydrated. The second thing that makes life more comfortable, and it's not 100% a must, but in my life it is. These are, these are real bicycle shorts. So I know we all call the tight shorts like this fabric or the spandex bike shorts. There's a reason this is a real bike short. You see that orange? That, my friends, is padding. And it's in here, it's look, it's the same shape as a seat on the bicycle, but it pads your tookish. Cause let me just tell you, you get sore. Um, like, oh, that's the worst part about spring training when I get on my bike is getting my butt tough. And, and that's what you have to do. You gotta ride it to get it tough. And also these shorts, you'll see seam placement where there isn't seams, where there is, it's all about comfort and aerodynamic. So these have some mesh on the sides. Um, I think there's a little pocket up here. I wouldn't use that pocket. Some people who ride longer wear bibs because they don't want this elastic at the waist. I don't ride that long. I'm not riding like seven, eight hours, so I don't need the elastic. But, oops. but I have my bicycling shorts. I have several pair. And I will tell you, the amount of money that you spend on these bicycle short is in direct correlation to how comfortable your butt is. It's not a lie. You gotta pay. This is one piece of equipment for my bike that I pay money for. I think these were $125. Uh, but I've had them also for probably seven years. They hold up really well. They're good quality. They even have like um, sticky elastic in here, like to, so they don't ride up, they don't move, but you gotta spend the money so your butt's not in pain. And then I wear matching ankle socks. The socks aren't as important. I'm not running, I'm riding. So these are fine. And I just, any old sock and I wear tennis shoes as long as they're comfortable and nothing rubs on my feet while I'm pedaling. And then the other equipment that I have for my bike are gloves. So these gloves, this is a set I bought two years ago because they match my bike, duh. And they're from Trek. Um, Again, not cheap, but important. So there's some leather here and there's padding. So when you're riding the bicycle and your hands are on this handlebar up here and you're leaning into it, I get very sore and you can end up with blisters on your hands. So this helps protect your hands from getting sore holding on to the grips. Um, not everybody wears them, but I have to wear them because I have tried without and it's very uncomfortable. So this is grippy, it's padded. So my hand is not gonna slide and it also is not gonna get like sore. Um, and also my grips, I get those replaced every season. I don't typically get my whole bike overhauled every season. I do get it tuned up and I get um, new grips, but for, I just need to wear my gloves. So I do have three pair, they get gross. I launder them, I just throw them in the wash and then I don't put them in the dryer and I don't use fabric softener on any of my cycling gear. On exercise wick away fabric, you shouldn't use fabric softener, it makes it ineffective. So I just wash it in warm water with detergent and I hang it all up to dry. Just gotta keep it in good shape. So I just have this little bag that stays in my container from the Dollar Tree that stays in my car with all of my stuff. Um, I have a chenille cloth, I use this for um, this and wipes when I get done. If I'm super hot, I can, you know, put it around my neck. It helps me stay cool and it absorbs. But this is called, uh, from Frog Togs, it's cooling wrap. You just gotta get it wet and you can wrap it around your neck. I don't ride with these because that would be dangerous to have anything hanging down, but I do use it when I get back to my car. So that stays in here. Let's see what else do I have in here, guys. Ooh, I have just disinfecting wipes because Corona, uh, sunblock. I typically will use this type of a mineral stick 
What you don't want is to smear your face with sunblock and run out. You will sweat sunblock into your eyes and be miserable. Trust me. So what I like to do is rub it here. I rub it on my cheeks. I rub it here and I rub it on my forehead, you know, face and neck on my way to ride. I give it 30 minutes to soak in and then I don't have any problems and you don't want to rub your face because you'll get blinded by the sunblock. This is baby mineral stick. It smells okay. It's like a deodorant stick, but it's a sunblock, so I can always reapply on my nose. Um, because of my hat, because of the hood, the helmet has some shade out here, and I wear sunglasses. Typically, I'm gonna burn below my eyes, so I'm always gonna double up on my nose and across this part of my face. It's just miserable to get sunburnt there. I'm always burning my lips. So I'm hoping I got some new this year. Plus I use spray block on my arms and legs. Nobody wants cancer. I'm riding for cancer for goodness sake. I can't be causing it. You gotta wear your sunblock. Sunblock. Um, this is my odometer for my bicycle. So it hooks on, eventually I will get this back on. I took everything off when I had my bike in the shop, but this hooks onto my spoke. There's a magnet and this up here and it counts the revolutions of tire of my tire going around and it tells my computer how many miles I've ridden and how long, what my cadence is. It keeps track of all the things. So I keep it in the zip bag off season and I just replace all the batteries and I have a backup set, but it goes on my bike. And as soon as I get ready to go ride, I will hook that up and then it stays on. I do have a lock for my bike, but it definitely is not something that I typically need. I keep it in case we go someplace. Um, but typically I can tell you I'm not leaving my bike anywhere. It was very expensive. This is, you know, initially this is not a cheap sport, but it's nothing I have to replace all the time. Like I said, I've had this bike for 10 years, but it was close to $1,400. So I'm not leaving it anywhere. However, sometimes my family and friends do what's called a ride for pie. If you live here in Ohio, the middle part of the state or Amish country, we have a restaurant called Der Dutchman. Well, there's a trail that goes out there up in from Hilliard, Ohio, and it goes out to Plain City, Der Dutchman, and that's called the Pie Ride. And we'll do that, and then we hook, I will bring my lock for that, because then I can lock it up. But I had to have one big enough, long enough to go through my front tires, it needs to go through my back tires, and the frame of the body. Because if somebody tries to steal my bike, and I only have my front tire, they'll just take it off. It's it unhooks, there's no tools required. There's a little clip here and it just, everything comes off. Or if I go with friends, we may lock all of our front wheels together and all of our back wheels. I've never had a problem, but I don't wanna ask for trouble either. So I keep a lock with me, but typically I'm not leaving my bike anywhere. Um, you always need little doodads. I get a lot of these as gifts, which I totally appreciate from my family. We're always trying to find the right thing to hook our phone up so we can, I can have my phone, I need my phone. Because it's music, it also, it, there's the maps on there where I'm riding, under my phone. We'll figure it out. And sanitizer, COVID. This I keep um, in my front, I have a front little zip pouch. If I'm riding and we're gonna stop somewhere to go to the bathroom or whatever, I just keep this. And I will have these in my front pouch when we ride in case we need to stop someplace. Um, if I were gonna ride at night, I would use a headlight. Um, they have headlights for your bike. I don't have one and I don't want to attach one, but if I, I don't typically ride at night, but if I need to, I can. Oh, and this is the contain, this is a little um, air container. This is enough to blow up one tire. I have two in my bike. I think this one might be dead. So I'm gonna throw it away. And then this is an old bag that I had for my bike that did fit on the front end but it doesn't hold my phone. So I'm debating finding a new phone holder and still using this on my bike or something. I don't know, I've got time. Decisions, guys, decisions. Oh, and a bungee that I leave in my bag too. So I used to hook my bike on the back of my car in a bike rack and then I would use this to go through my wheel so that it wouldn't spin while my bike was riding. I could go through the front and the back wheel or whatever. I also put socks on my pedals because it might, they would scratch my car. I have since bought a new car 
that my bike fits inside of so I don't need to, because it would involve, depending where I was going with my bike, it would involve locking it to the rack, bunging it to the rack. It was, it involved a lot of stuff, okay. So we won't be doing that. Um, this is what it looks like. This is my rider number from, I don't even know what year this is, probably, I would say 2019 since we didn't ride in 2020, but every year we'll get this. My number is always LS004 because that's the number I was assigned on in 2011, 2010, 11, whatever my first year was riding. This was the number that I was assigned and this will always be my number with Pelotonia. Now up next, you're gonna see a tour of my bike like I said, I hope that you enjoy these videos. And if you can, please think about maybe donating to my ride as little as $5. Um, any little bit helps. And if you can't, if you could like, subscribe, share, um, and maybe we'll get enough money that I could be a high roller. Ooh, a high roller. They're fancy. They get fancy jerseys. And I think you have to raise 5000 for that. Plus the fact that it's great for cancer research. But who doesn't want to be a high roller? I don't know. But all right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Bye. All right, here is my bike, Speedy. <laughs> she is a road bike. Sorry for any of the bright light or shadowing. She's a road bike. I got her in 2011-12, not 100% sure. The brand is Trek and the model is Lexa. This specific model is the 54 centimeter, which I believe is one of the smallest, shortest frames that they have for the women. Not 100% on that either. Now, what makes this a road bike? Part of it is the tires. They are very narrow and slick. There's no tread here. It's very lightweight. I can lift it with one arm. This happens to be a 10 speed. They do go up to 21 speed. Um, it's just aerodynamic, lightweight, bicycle. Up here is, you know, my grips. This is where I hold on. Here's how I change gears. On this bike, my brakes go in and out. This side goes in, the other side goes in. That's to use the brake, but if I push these two in, it's to change the gears. And the same on that side. I do have an odometer that'll go up here when I'm riding. Here's my bag. It's supposed the bag is supposed to go here but it was hitting my knees because it's such a short distance. So I've hung it up here like a basket. It's just gonna hold my phone, any incidentals that I might need. She just got a bath, new brakes, new gears, new pedals. So these pedals are um, Trek, they are navy blue. You probably can't see that. And these um, are screws that go in and they hold on to my shoe so I don't slip off. I got those new. That's the water bottle cage so I can have two drinks while I'm out riding. She got all cleaned up and new gear cables. So these cables here are what go from the handlebar and they tell the chain what I want it to do. So when I'm riding and I'm moving these, it's changing the position of the chain. Up front here, I have two, you can see one here. Here, I'll go around the other side. Oops. So on the big pedal or on the big wheel, there's two. And then I have all those gears back there. So this is my ride, Speedy.